I've recently been doing some electronics projects, and as part of these electronics projects I've had to solve quite a few linear systems of equations. And uh, sometimes these can get quite complicated, and in a recent example I had one that was 15 unknowns with 15 equations all connecting them together. So in total we have a 16 by 16 uh, linear system of equations if we write it as an augmented matrix. And so it's quite irritating to manually solve all of this by hand. And so my usual tactic to go to, especially when we have a complicated system, is just manual Gaussian elimination. But Gaussian elimination is not a very natural algorithm for humans to do on our own. And so I came to the realization that I could just quickly write up a Gaussian eliminator in C and just write a quick program that will do it for me. And so that's exactly what I did. We now have a nice, somewhat simple program that can take in a system of linear equations and it can output the value for each of these and if you actually evaluate each of these you'll see that this is verifiably true 4 times 4 is 16 plus 3 squared is 9 is 25 which you know is what you'd expect and so I've wrote up a quick program that can show you the process of doing the elimination as well which shows exactly what you get as the coefficient matrix or the augmented coefficient matrix and what you get after we perform Gaussian elimination and so today I'd like to talk uh, somewhat about how I implemented this Gaussian eliminator and how actually my method for stepping through this was because for the first time you'll notice actually I had to do unit testing on eutils which I need to talk about at some point later on but anyway what actually is Gaussian elimination well Gaussian elimination is a quite a simple technique. It's actually quite a simple algorithm when you dig down into its depths. But it's also very, very clever. And uh, it essentially makes it so that you can obtain a system of equations such that each one is only a combination of the unknowns you have already solved for. So if we look at this matrix down here, well, all we've done is we've placed the coefficients from our system as entries in this matrix, and then we've placed its evaluation here as the uh, far right hand column and so all that the algorithm does is it steps through and it subtracts it in such a way so that as we go down the rows uh, in fact a better example is probably system 2 because that doesn't have any duplicated rows so in this case we have three unknowns and these unknowns are packaged into a matrix as so and so what we do is on each row we subtract it such that the leading coefficients are 0 up until we have a leading coefficient of 1 uh, and so the reason that we do this is because we then obtain a system where the lowest down equation is going to have a coefficient of 1 and it's going to have its value here as the value of the system. And so we can successfully use uh, a computer method, a computerized method to eliminate all the variables that we don't care about and then we can simply use back substitution to obtain a value as we go up the system. And so if we, as we go down the coefficient matrix as it's been eliminated we'll have a equation if the system is consistent I should say we'll have an equation which tells us the value for our least significant coefficient so in this case if we uh, just show the, the output of this our least significant is C here or our third one I should say the, the furthest one to the right we obtain a value of 7 for and then we can simply back substitute for the rest of them so 7 times 0 0.470588 uh, and then because this is a negative coefficient we add this value onto here and then we obtain a value of uh, approximately 6 multiplied by 7 I should say multiply this by 7 and then add it onto here and we obtain a, a value of 6 apparently I mean the computers are better at maths than I am so I'm gonna trust them um, and then obviously once we get to the top we simply have a linear combination of all of the other coefficients as we have gone down the matrix and once we have that we're able to solve for this variable by just dividing by the magnitude in here and so that's exactly what this program solve is doing if we look in solve.c it's actually pretty simple so it looks quite complicated but a lot of this is just debugging code actually that I haven't taken out so the first step actually is we just check for our arguments which we don't care about and the second step is actually passing the maths expression um, passing mathematics isn't actually that difficult of a problem if we look in uh, pass.c uh, we can see that a lot of this code is actually exp mat is uh, expression to matrix this formats a uh, augmented matrix um, uh, a lot of this is just uh, elementary matrix operations but if we eliminate all of this out and just have a look at uh, the pass method here it's basically a finite state machine you can see that we basically switch over uh, this state variable here 
over and over again, which starts at zero. So we strip white space, then we decide whether it's coefficient or unknown. The reason we have to do that actually is because uh, it, we don't write a coefficient of one. Um, I wanted it to be as close to natural mathematics as possible, so I didn't want to have to write out 1a, for instance. Um, and then the rest of it is just formatting it in an expression format. If we actually look in uh, solve.h, we can see the expression format that I went for um, was it's so an unsigned char ncof. The reason it's an unsigned char is actually because I put a hard limit on the number of coefficients at 26, so we can save some space. It's Realistically, I could have just made it an int, but... I don't know. Uh, this int mask here should be unsigned, actually. Not that it really matters in this case, but this is a bit mask, and the reason I made it a bit mask is because 26 is less than 32, so we can efficiently store uh, which coefficients in this uh, pre-allocated space have been used by simply oring it with the value uh, left or right shifted. I can't remember. Um, I think I'd go on a limit say left shifted, but we can essentially we can check this bit mask using an and test and an or set when we uh, encounter a coefficient. So essentially, say in this expression we have this coefficient set, and so we can trivially test when one is set later on. Uh, cough sim was a little later on addition, and these are actually chars, and they're literally just the char literals that it read. If we go back to pass. The only reference to cough sim is when we set it to the value of our walk, which is a char pointer. So when we reference the char pointer, we get the current coefficient value. We, oh, sorry, we get the current unknown that we've passed the coefficient for. We can see we're passing the unknown here. Um, and so we use that basically for, to show which coefficient we've solved for at the end. And then this c here is just the constant term at the end. So for instance, when we had a plus b equals 24, c is equal to 24. Um, and so all all of that's just the parsing code, so that allows it to parse natural mathematics. Uh, the next thing it does, xmat, is expression to matrix. If we have a look at xmat, all it does is it loops through all of the coefficients and it just sets them up into an augmented matrix with a bunch of mem setting and malloc'ing and etc etc. Um, then we have the Gauss reduce, and I separated all of this code out actually into another source file just called Gauss.c. Um, I mean, see here. Uh, there's a few different functions in here, but the one that we're interested in is Gauss Reduce here, and in a second we'll be interested in Gauss Solve as well, which is down at the bottom. So we start out with some memory bookkeeping, mem setting it to zero, then we duplicate the matrix, but actually we only do this really so that we can preserve the size information. Everything else then gets overwritten, we don't actually start with a duplicated matrix. Um, we then had to map verify, because if map dupe fails to allocate memory, it returns a null matrix, and we don't want to attempt to Gauss reduce a null matrix or a zero matrix because that would be bad. We'll get a bunch of not a numbers and stuff like that. Um, and so we might get, it might say n there's no solutions when what it really means is out of memory. So we return an invalid matrix and this is detected in the main loop. Uh, so the next step it says here, optimization attempts. So we attempt to build the matrix in the order of the leading coefficients. So in linear algebra we call that the pivot, the leading coefficient. So we can see in this example here the pivot is the one here. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to line up our newly constructed matrix so that the pivot lines up with the uh, nth row. So for instance, if the pivot is at index 2 here, we, or let's start at 1, so the index is at 3 here, it's the third column, we want it to be a row 3 here, and as we can see, that's what it's doing. And so echelon form dictates that the row n should contain 1 at the nth column and zeros before it, basically detect the pivot and place it in the correct row. So uh, that's what the g row pos function does, it just detects where the pivot is in a row. Uh, it should be called pivot pos or something, I don't know. Um, then the rest of it is basically just formatting the matrix. You can see a lot of mem copying about and stuff like that. It's, it, it's pretty trivial, mostly memory bookkeeping. And then we have the actual Gaussian elimination. So we see it's now in an easy to cancelable position. In other words, it's got the pivots in the right place. And so we aim to get a matrix in echelon form stated above. Um, so basically what we do is, so let's go back to our uh, visualization here. So for each of these rows, we detect which column we want to now eliminate and so what we do is we loop up to the index of the row and then we do a 
modulus over the number of coefficients in case we have no more rows than coefficients. Uh, realistically, we could just ignore any rows that are after the number of coefficients, uh, but I thought it would be cleaner to write a full Gaussian elimination implementation. So, so for this instance, for instance, we actually skip over the first row because we wouldn't eliminate anything, we just cause ourselves problems. Um, on the second row, however, because we're zero indexed, the second row has index one, so we're going to do one l iteration of trying to eliminate a variable, so we're going to eliminate this one here. So, uh, let's zoom in slightly. So, to attempt to eliminate this four, we basically have to subtract a linear combination of that above it. And so uh, we see how many nines can we fit into four, so basically we subtract nine over four multiplied by the first row, and when we do that we obviously get zero as the leading coefficient. And then as a separate step we then divide by the uh, what's it called now, the inverse one over. We divide by this one um, the multiplicative inverse, I forget what it's called. <laughs> this always happens on camera. Anyway, we, we multiply this row by some constant such that this here is a, a 1. And so then we have a technical solution for this based on the fact that we're now going to solve for this variable because for this row here, which is at index 2, we run two iterations of our elimination loop. And note that because the row above it now has a 0 in this position, we can now eliminate each variable separately by just subtracting. So first we start by subtracting this row, which has every coefficient, so we can eliminate this row. And then we subtract this row, which has this as the coefficient, uh, and it will have zero in this place, so we can eliminate this one separately. It's quite clever that, I think. Um, so if we go back uh, to what we're actually doing, I programmed a mode in this. So if you pass dash V at the command line, it will show you the matrices as it's eliminating. And so as you can see, we get zeros here, then a one, and then we get the solution in the constant position here. It doesn't show you the solution as it loops through it, though. So that's how Gaussian elimination works. We basically eliminate each variable at a time by doing some clever linear algebra operations. And in fact, there's actually quite a nice visualization as what we're doing on the three blue one brown channel. We're basically saying, as a matrix, it's representing a transformation of space, the transformation of the grid lines we draw space on. And so our solution set is essentially any matrix which allows us to transform this such that our vector here transforms onto our uh, set of constants. So we want to come up with some vector that will be transformed by our coefficient matrix such that it lands on our solution set, if that makes sense. So there is a visual way of looking at it. It's not really very helpful if I'm completely honest. It just sort of overcomplicates the problem. So the last key ingredient in this uh, program is this solve function here and so basically this is in charge of doing back substitution so we found a solution if the row contains the variable that we wish to solve for and variables we have already solved for uh, and also the coefficient for the variable that we're solving for isn't allowed to be infinite or not a number as well that's uh, checked for by this uh, is normal function down here. That's a C standard library function that just checks whether a floating point number is not not a number or infinite or like negative zero or something weird like that. But anyway, we loop through each of our columns and then we check whether the column is equal to the unknown. If it has a valid coefficient, then we set valid. If it, if it doesn't have a valid coefficient, sorry, so uh, it, it's been eliminated, so it's equal to zero, or we have an infinite or not a number coefficient, then either there's no solution for the variable, in other words, it's a free variable or uh, the system is inconsistent, either of, in either of which of these uh, cases we're not going to get a solution for this, co uh, for this unknown. So we ignore it, we set valid to zero and we stop spinning for that coefficient. Uh, scale is then set to the value of the row at this column. The reason I did this was because I noticed that there were some instances in which uh, g underscore row pos wasn't giving us the right column, so in some cases we don't divide by the correct reciprocal, that's the word I was looking for earlier. We don't divide, multiply by the correct reciprocal so that we have a 1 in that column. Um, so we have to then divide by the value that we have left over in that column later. So, uh, the next thing that we do, assuming that we're not at the unknown column, uh, we check whether we know that we have solved for this unknown. If we have solved for it, then this is a valid solution because we're able to back substitute. Um, if it's not, uh, if, if we haven't solved for it, then it's not valid because they're in a different order. We've we, we've not done it correctly. Um, 
if the coefficient is not a number or is infinite, then obviously we can't solve if one of the coefficients is infinite or was not a number because that means this, the it usually means the system is inconsistent. And we can actually see that if we run so, if I show test four, we see a plus b equals five and a plus b equals twenty four. It's quite a trivial example, but if we run solve with this, we run dash v and we uh, do test four as the pipe that in. Uh, we can see it correctly constructs the matrix but then we get negative not a number and infinite as our solution for this and so it says the solu the system was inconsistent or unsolvable so it couldn't solve for any variables in here they were all inconsistent. Um, so it's able to detect that using this pretty trivial bit of logic down here. Uh, so if we don't get a valid solution we continue and attempt to find one because they could be in a different order we never know the uh, algorithm's quite messy at some points. Um, there is a side effect of this that uh, essentially means if you have one equation that is inconsistent with the rest but you then go on to have one that's consistent later it will find the equation that's consistent and it will ignore the one that's inconsistent and so you'll have to pass dash v to detect inconsistent equations essentially so you can see which ones have infinite coefficients or not a numbers uh, so buff is then just the buffer of our uh, solution set and it's a long double pointer and it has uh, the the maximum size of it is uh, mat dims unknowns minus one so what we do is we just subtract the offset from it because we're starting from the least significant one furthest to the right so we start at the end of the buffer uh, and then we set sol mask uh, and then we set it to one here sol mask essentially says that we have solved for this variable and also we have eq mask so uh, we never consider the same equation twice if we've already solved for a variable from that equation the reason being I had a look through it and I think I managed to come up with a proof that uh, if you have already solved for an equation uh, assuming that every other uh, coefficient in that row uh, if you think about it, if we have every other coefficient in that row we've already solved for and the only solution we were able to get was for one more coefficient, it's impossible for that equation to give us another valid solution to the system because we've already solved for the variable in that row and every other variable, so we can't have another solution. So that's a minor optimization that means we can't visit the same row twice, the same equation twice. So it also aids in detecting inconsistent systems because that would suggest we could get two different solutions for the same coefficient uh, for the same unknown. I keep mixing those words up today. So uh, the end result of this is we have a nice program where if I actually show all of the equations in here, in fact, for f in test and then let's just cat f and then uh, echo a little row between them. Um, these are all of the systems that I have been testing it on. So here's the inconsistent one. Here's the first one here. And the reason I tested this is so that we can test out of bounds reads when there's more uh, equations that there are coefficients. It's now fixed that. Uh, but this is completely consistent and it works. Uh, it does a full Gaussian elimination. In fact, if we show it, test dash. Uh, uh, solve dash v and we pipe in test dash 1 we can see that it simply repeats the elimination down here it eliminates uh, it, it eliminates variables as wanted we get essentially as though we had two coefficient matrices returned in echelon form and we still get the same result and we can still detect whether it's consistent or not uh, we have another one here and even actually the system is now able to solve wh uh, when there are three variables and it's also able to solve when the variables are zero in one or more of the equations. It will find the equation that doesn't have a zero coefficient and that's part of the reason for the uh, misordering returned by g underscore row pause because if it has a zero coefficient it's not going to detect that until later so uh, the uh, pretty dumb solution uh, that I implemented for when you have zero coefficients is essentially just to do a minor pre-processing step so we go through the coefficient matrix and we find one row that contains every coefficient uh, that's uh, so every every unknown is mentioned in that equation and then we simply add the two rows together and the effect of this is that every single row mentions every single equation so it's impossible for us to get infinite solutions for a consistent system so as I said the end result of this is a uh, a mini little program that can solve any valid consistent system of linear equations and I think I put a hard cap uh, on 255 equations I think 
Um, no, I reduce it to 26. The reason I reduce it to 26, I think, is because you can only have 26 unknowns, so anything more than that will automatically be unconstrained. So, uh, you can see it can also detect an unconstrained system by the fact that there are more unknowns than there are uh, equations to solve for them. So, anyway, that was a quick demonstration of my implementation of a Gaussian eliminator and how I've used it to solve a system of linear equations equals 7, a minus b equals 3. We can see that we get the pretty trivial answer here. It's nice and simple and it works and I'm happy with it. It has sped up m uh, massively and for some reason it's actually faster than the implementation on my calculator. FX, I think it's FX991GX or something like that. Uh, this calculates it a lot faster than that. It's probably because this has got a proper processor instead of like a microprocessor in it like an old Intel one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. That was Gaussian Elimination and check out eutils. Uh, remote show hosted at this location here, GitHub, Ethan V2 eutils.git. Enjoy, thanks.